Hello everybody, welcome back to a, another Start Border video. My name is Ruben and in this video I'm going to be talking you through the Nash Hover Wing Foil, more of the traditional baseboard compared to the new compact LE. So a lot of these new compact boards are coming out from lots of different brands. Nash really wanted us to do a comparison between these two boards and I have personally been using this original Hover for many, many years. I had a one before this version, so I do know this board very well. But over the last month, I have been using this new compact LE and we've got a lot of interesting things to say about this and hopefully give you a good idea whether this new compact shorter board is the right board that you should be looking at wing foiling and maybe even a bit of subsurf foiling as well. If you're new to the sport and you're not aware of the brand Nash, the Nash are a very top level big brand when it comes to windsurfing, equipment sales and boards, paddle boards, paddles, foils, foil boards and actually wings as well. Nash have been at the forefront of winging since the very very start. They were one of the first wings we ever saw and this is their new compact LE shape. So this is brand new, this has only just come out. A few of you are starting to get on it, but definitely try and understand if this very different shape board is right for you, it's gonna be key to making sure you enjoy progressing your wing foiling and potentially your sup surf foiling as well. So moving on to the specifications between these two boards. So the, looking at the original hover wing board, this board is 5'7 long, it's 27.5 inches wide, it's 4 and 1 fifths inches thick, and it's 95 litres. We weighed this one at 6.8 kilograms. You can get nine sizes in this board, starting from 40 litres all the way up to 140 litres. This, as I said, is the 95 litre one, and it retails at $1,569 or £1,199. Looking at the Hover Wingfoil Compact LE, this one is five foot one in length, 28.5 inches wide, five and three sixteenths thick. It weighs 6.32 kilograms. You get four sizes in this one, starting from a 70 liter up to 115 liter. This one is the 100 liter one here, and this retails at $1,629 or 1,319 pounds. The constructions of these boards are both exactly the same. They are the full carbon wood construction. So you've got a high density EPS foam core, then you've got multiple layers of glass, carbon, double layers of wood under the standing area, wood right around the bottom of the board, and that does give you a very light and hard wearing board. Now we'll definitely jump in here and give you my own personal feedback of these boards, or definitely the white board and the orange board I had before that were the same construction, very, very tough. I have put these boards through an absolute beating, and you may have even seen a YouTube video I did a while ago about my new foil board was this one. Yes, we, I chose this one out of all the other foil boards I could buy for lots of different reasons, but one of the reasons was the construction. So I really will stand fast and say that my original hover and the one before are a very good construction. So there's no reason that this one shouldn't be as strong Looking at the shape of the board, you can obviously see they are very different shapes. Longer, shorter, wider, narrower. Even though on the video here, the right one does actually look wider than this compact board, but you are looking at about an inch wider for this compact board. And you'll also notice the width of the tail, there's a lot more width down at the bottom of the board compared to the original wing foil. Looking at the other things, the rail shape of the board, Fairly similar overall, they're trying to get the same sort of characteristics out of these two boards, but you've got a real way more thickness in this compact board because you've got to get that volume into the shorter space of the board. They've both still got their beveled rails, so when you do touch down, the boards don't catch in the water so they can pop back up nice and easy. That's a sort of standard thing that most foil brands have got. You don't want to have too sharp rails, especially up near the forward section of the board, because as you do touch down, they will drag and sometimes catch if you have too sharp rails. The actual rocker line template of the board, which is the curve of the board from the front to the back, you will notice that the smaller compact has got a little bit more rocker up towards the nose compared to the longer board. They've put that in there so when you do touch down again, you do not nose dive because you've got less board length. So it does mean that the shorter you go with any board, the designer really has to get more of the characteristics in that shorter space so you can still have a good ride on the water and if you do touch down you're not going to nosedive. 
Looking at the bottom shape itself, double concave up on the nose with both of these boards. It looks like the smaller compact has got more concave than the more traditional long board, let's say, but actually it's about the same. It's just, again, pushed into that smaller compact shape, so you do see it a little bit more. So double concave up towards the nose, moves to the back of the board, generally quite flat around the midsection, and then you have a release where the back of the board comes up to the tail. You have a bigger release on the more traditional wing foil and a shorter release on the compact board. Which brings us on to looking at the foil box placement. You'll notice on the compact board, the foil box is way further back compared to the wing foil. Also bear in mind where that is compared to the foot strap placement, you'll find the foot straps are in the same place in relation to the foil box. So the back foot strap for the compact board is right at the tail of the board compared to the wing board, which is a little bit further forward. So if you are opting for foot straps, this is a really interesting thing. We'll speak about it again in a more in a minute, but your back foot strap is right at the back of the board with this compact board. And obviously you're gonna have a lot less stability if your foot is right at the back, especially if you're not on the foil. So Nash have taken the length of the compact board from the nose and the tail. Looking at the other fittings and features that are on the boards, they both have the same handles on the top and the bottom, which is really good. It gives you more option when you're carrying your kit down to the water, whether it's wing, with a wing, or maybe just subsurf foiling. The inbuilt pressure gap valve is in the same place. You've got the same amount of foot strap positionings. You can have them in the offset stance. You can have them in the more traditional sort of wing windsurf set stance, you can put them crossways, you can use them subsurfing. I do think that the Nash foot strap setups are probably some of the best foot strap setups on the market. Obviously we haven't used every single board in the market and there is so many boards coming out at the moment, but for what we've used, the way that they set them up gives you loads of options for running all sorts of foot strap configurations. The EVA deck pad is very similar between the two. You've got your diamond gripped EVA deck pad. The new compact board that we've got is finished off with a crocodile style grip on top of this one, which actually is a little bit grippier than the original one. At the back of the board, you've got a nice kicker there, which is great. So if you're riding strapless, you can ram your foot against it. You know where you are on the board. Down the center of the board, on both of the boards, you've got a sort of mini EVA raised sort of pad, which you can feel under your foot. And the only other standout difference between these two boards on the top is the compact has a gloss finish on the top deck and the original wing board has a matte finish on the top deck. Just turning the boards over there, you can see the foil box placement. You can see the difference in the graphics. They both have the carbon stringer going up through the bottom of the board. But again, the real standout is the foil box placement. Look how much further back that foil box is and obviously the compact nose shape. So compact boards in general, what is the advantage of using a compact board? Why should we be looking at compact boards? Well, the shorter you go, the easier it's going to be to throw that board around. The easier you're gonna to find to go into the jibes because the nose of the board isn't going to want to pull you down. So the less swing weight you have in general, the better flying experience you're going to have. Whether you are subsurf foiling, wing foiling, prone foiling, any sort of foiling, but as soon as you're in the air, the less swing weight, the less nose shape you have, the better the riding experience. The downside to that is obviously when you're not on the foil, you're gonna have a smaller board to stand on. Whether you are sup, surf, prone, wing, any sort of foiling, when you're not on the foil, you're gonna have a smaller, harder board to use. And obviously the certain conditions that you going are going out in is gonna really make a difference to how easy that board is to use as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna elaborate on that a bit more. I'm gonna speak about the pros to both of these boards separately. Then I'm gonna give you a good idea about who should be looking at what board and the conditions you should be looking to use what board in as well. And finish off with any cons and observations about the boards and give you a little summary at the end. So let's start off by looking at the more traditional, let's say, wing foil board, the longer board. It's definitely gonna give you more overall glide. So if you're looking to catch waves early, you're gonna find that you're gonna paddle into a wave much quicker. If you're trying to get up onto your wing in lighter winds, you're gonna find that board is going to give you that more glide and it's gonna be easier to get up in lighter winds. 
Because of that also, it's gonna be easier to use. So if you're a lower level rider, which is why they have lots of different sizes in this board, you're gonna find it easier to use because it's gonna be more forgiving overall. Because the board is quite pulled in up at the nose, it doesn't actually have a huge amount of weight up on the nose, so when you are foiling, it is still fairly easy to throw around, easy to surf with, easy to wing with, so you still can use that board pretty efficiently because there isn't much weight up there. This is a very good shape if you want to get into a bit of sup surf foiling, get into a bit of wing foiling, maybe even try a bit of prone surf foiling. You could do a lot of different foiling disciplines with this shape board. So with the compact board, you've obviously got a lot less swing weight. Because of that, it's way easier to also pump the board on the foil. Having less nose weight up there really allows you to keep your pumps flowing and makes it much, much easier to pump. The other th big things that are sort of don't really come out until you really use this board. For the size, this board is actually incredibly stable. Remember, it's an inch wider overall, and that inch goes much further back towards the tail. So when you're standing and you're not in your foot straps, or you're not on the wing, or you're not about to catch your wave subsurfing, and you're in that sort of more in the middle of the board stance, the board is very stable. Good amount of stability from side to side. That was the biggest surprise that we had when we rode these boards in a few different sessions and in the surf as well, which is a really good idea of understanding how stable a board is. The compact board did actually feel pretty stable in relation to the longer board. Now, Nash don't really advertise this compact board as a surf surf foil board, but you can actually take it surf surf foiling as well. The takeoffs to get up onto the wave are gonna be later. You're gonna to have to be a little bit more tuned into how to read your foils. That's where the longer board is a lot easier. You're gonna get on that wave earlier. It's gonna give you more time. It's gonna allow you to adjust onto the wave easier. The compact board is just more compact. Everything's happening quicker, but you can get up and surf surf with this board as well. When you're riding up on the foil, whether you're with your wing or just in the surf, it does feel very nice. Yes, you've got the nose length that's come off and you, you can throw that nose around, but because your back foot is right on the tail of the board, it's very easy to direct the board through turns. Now, what I mean by that, and the big one, Will really noticed this when he was riding it, is as you're going through foiling tacks, at the end of your foiling tack, you sort of throw your wing over your head, you rotate round to come out of the tack, with your back foot right on the back of the board, especially in a foot strap, you can just twist the board and you're gone. And I don't know why it is, but definitely having the foot strap obviously over the foil box in the same place as both these boards, but the foil box is further back on the compact board, does make those foiling tacks very, very responsive, very quick to throw that around. So that was a really interesting observation that we noticed when we use these boards back to back. Now, before I speak about the best riding conditions for these boards and maybe the ability, a few cons or observations. The gloss finish on the deck of the new compact board, it does look cool, but it does pick up on the scratches. You might scratch the board about the same with the more traditional wing board, but I don't really worry about that. I scratch it, it's a matte finish, you don't really see it, so you will be seeing it more with a high gloss finish. That's the same with a lot of the Nash stuff at the moment. They've got a high gloss finish on all their foils. They look fantastic when they come straight out of the box, but after you've used them, and you were like us, you dragged them up the beach, hit a few sandbanks, you do notice a few of the scratches on the high gloss. So that's an observation, whether you're a gloss person or not. The only other small observation really, which was the deck pad was much nicer on the compact board, the new board, compared to the original one. Very tiny difference. I think it's just to do with the crocodile style deck on top of the diamond grip that makes it a little bit grippier on the new compact board. Okay, so now let's talk about the conditions you could use these boards in and the sort of rider you're gonna to have to be to be able to get on these boards. So starting off with the traditional wing foil board. Way more sizes in the Nash range, so you're gonna be able to be a lower, a complete beginner to get into the sport. That extra length does mean that getting in the foot straps is a little bit easier overall. If you're paddling out and paddling out over waves or popping out over waves with your wing, the longer board is gonna make that a little bit easier. So in rougher conditions and subsurfing conditions, yes, the longer, more traditional board is going to be better. 
So if you're wanting to get into subsurf foiling, you're wanting to get into wing foiling, you're wanting to get into lots more, fo lots more foiling disciplines, definitely that board is still the easiest board to use. Wind strength, if you want to go out in lighter winds or maybe you're a heavier person and you're trying to get up on the foil earlier, then the longer board is going to be easier. Again, a little bit more glide like we said earlier, it's really going to help that board speed get up and then your foil speed get up and then you get up onto the foil. It still has that nice cutaway at the back there so you can stamp on the tail and help initiate that foil and get up in lighter winds as well or smaller waves for that matter. So the original Nash Huddle wing board is still a very good all round board that in general is a little bit easier to use. Looking at the compact board, let's talk about ability. You're gonna have to be a higher level ability overall to really get something out of this board. Yes, the bigger board might float you. Yes, you maybe you only weigh 60 kilos and the board is float enough, but because of that short length, you are gonna to have to know how to read your foil to really get up, especially in the lighter winds. If you are trying to get up on your wing foil in lighter wind conditions, you're gonna to have to be really way more efficient with reading your foil, understanding the gusts, understanding how to trim your wing effectively to get the most out of all of those elements to get yourself up on the foil because it's way, way shorter. Having said that, if you are efficient and you know how to get up on the foil in lighter winds, you know how to pump and get your existing foil board up in early and light winds now, then this could be a very good board for you to use. But if you are using this board in choppier waters, in seas, in really bumpy lakes, this board is gonna be harder to stand on before you're up on the foil, before you've got the wing in your hand. You're gonna to have to get to your comfortable wing position quicker than you would do with a more traditional board. Foot strap placement, the foot strap that is much, much further back, well it is at the back of the board, so getting your back foot in, you're gonna to have to be a little bit more on it with getting in your foot strap. You've got a lot less board in that length, haven't you? And the back of the board, where your back foot's in the foot strap, maybe you're trying to get under the foil, the wind drops, like us, we ride a lot of times in the foot straps all the time the board will sink right on the tail there because you have got all your body weight right on the edge of the board and it's gonna go down. When the wind gets up, the compact is a lot, lot easier to use. And to be honest, if you're okay at getting in the foot straps, probably in windy conditions, you probably won't find the difference between getting up on the foil with the wing very different between these two boards. But as soon as that wind drops, as soon as it gets become lighter and marginal, the compact definitely requires way more technique. Really a guide is if you're not making your jibes yet and you're not up and foiling 99% of the time, do not look at this compact board yet. Stick to your more traditional longer base board like the hover wing. In summary of these two boards, I can definitely see why Nash have brought this compact board into the range. It really does sit alongside their original hover wing board very, very well. You've got loads of sizes in that hover wing board to choose from, whether you're getting into the sport or maybe you want to be a high level rider and you want that super small prone surfing shape that's still in that original board range. This new compact range, there's not as many boards. They are super short. I think if you really are trying to get into throwing the board around, getting into jumping, spinning, trying to elevate your jumps as high as possible, then the compact board is the better board to look at. It is definitely designed for a higher level rider. You're gonna have to be that good intermediate level. If you do jump on that board earlier, you are gonna make your riding suffer, especially in the lighter wind conditions. If you're looking at them for sup surfing, the original one is still the easier board because you've got a little bit more glide and you can just get on those waves a bit earlier. Again, you're gonna to have to be a bit more on it to get onto the new compact. Really good to use this board. I think possibly we'll be keeping this board in our quiver ourselves. Will is really liking this board. But again, he's a little bit lighter than me. I'm still gonna stick with my original Nash Hover Wing Foil because it does everything I want it to do in a lot of different conditions. I hope you found this video review interesting and informative. Any questions and comments, if you've used them, please get them in the comments below. Love to hear your feedback. 
If you're interested in more SUP content and also remember SUP Border Pro content, get on the main SUP Border website. Loads of stuff on there about all sorts of disciplines and at all sorts of levels as well. Thank you very much. Subscribe, like, and comment, and we'll see you on another video real soon.